want you out of the house tonight. I'm not leaving. Class, settle down, please. Welcome to Acting for Film and TV. Brought to you by Lee WTV. I'm your host, Ed Schultz. As promised in our previous video, today we're focusing on how to find work. Okay, so now let's assume that maybe you have your headshot ready, some kind of resume, and you're ready to get to work. Okay, one of the first things, people, beginning actors, novice actors, generally think that they need an agent. Not so. But how did you know? At this point in your career, you do not need an agent. What you need to do is to begin to get a body of work. Because when you are ready for an agent or a manager, you need to be able to show them that they can, that you can do the work. But I'll do anything! They're going to be investing their time and their money in you and your career. But before they do, they need to know that you can deliver the goods. But I'll do anything! That you can act, that you can follow directions, and that you can do what you need to do to be a successful actor. You can listen to them, you can listen to a director. These are the kinds of things that they need to know that you can do before you get an agent. So in the beginning, at least, you don't need an agent. There are plenty of things that you can do on your own to get work for yourself. Before even thinking about an agent, there are two things that you really need at this point if you want to get work. One, a smartphone, or and or, to a computer. Because right now, if you want to begin to get some kind of work, Facebook is your friend. That's where you're going to go to find auditions, castings, different kinds of support that you're going to need. Okay, first thing that you need to do with Facebook, and by the way, a very important thing about Facebook, you need to be careful what you post on your personal page on Facebook because people in the industry will look at that. And if you have all kinds of junk, if you have all kinds of obscenity, uh, you know, religious talk, political talk, things like that, that's going to be a big turnoff for them. So do keep that in mind. Be careful what you post on social media of any kind, because it's out there and you cannot take it back. Let's start with what you need to look for on Facebook. Go to the search bar and put in casting directors and the name of the nearest major city to you. Could be Boston, could be Cleveland, could be Houston, could be Des Moines, wherever you happen to be. The closest large city. Put in casting directors. You may or you may not, depending on where you happen to live, get a list of different pages, etc., from casting directors. That's one of your major sources for finding auditions. Okay? Another thing you need to do in Facebook is to search for actors in your area. Again, actors, Cleveland, Boston, uh, Miami, wherever you happen to be. There you'll find other people like yourself who are actors who want to get work, who will share auditions and casting notices with you, and other resources. For example, if you need at some point, well, your headshot, you don't have a good headshot, you can go to one of these groups, one of these actors groups, and say, hey, I'm a beginner, I need a good headshot, where can I get one? Who's available in my area that's a good headshot photographer? That kind of thing. Acting classes. Again, be, be realistic and be honest. I'm a beginner. I'd like to learn more about the craft. Where can I go in my area to find acting classes, workshops, improv workshops, anything like that? Facebook 
is your friend. Stop! At this point, hold on. Now, you need to ask yourself if you are really ready. Now, I'm giving you some resources, some ideas as to where to go to find work, but one of the most important things for you as an actor is, just like getting any kind of job, there's an interview involved. And in show business, we call it an audition. Are you ready to audition? Do you know what you need to do? But I'll do anything! Okay. Don't be, now don't, don't be a crybaby. Because you've gone this far, you feel pretty good about yourself, you feel that you're ready. As I said, don't be a crybaby. One of the things that you need to learn, if you're going to be a good actor, is discipline. You need to do the right thing at the right time. You may not always like it, but that's what you need to do. Now, what kind of work can you expect to get? You haven't got a lot of experience. You haven't done a lot of acting. You haven't been on the set of a film. What kind of work can you reasonably expect to get? I would say my advice would be that the first thing you should do is to seek out work as an extra, a background actor. Because background actors... Background actors really don't have to act. They just have to be natural. One of the most important things in almost any film is the extras, the background act actors. They're the ones who make various environments look natural. Imagine, for just a moment, if you would, going to a restaurant. Okay? Now, there's a scene in a restaurant, you and somebody else are having some kind of discussion. But there are no other patrons in the restaurant. Does that look natural? No. Imagine, imagine being in a classroom and there was only a teacher. There were no students. These are scenes in which you need people to be in the background, just like furniture in a room. They're not overly significant to the story itself, but they're there to set the stage, to make it look realistic. People walking down the street, people, as I said, in a restaurant, eating at other tables. These are people who are called background extras, or, I'm sorry, background actors, also known as extras. And as I said, you don't have to act in order to do that. You just have to do the kinds of things that you normally do. Walk around the mall, eat your meal. Why are these background actors so important? Well, for one thing, just imagine if the scene is being shot in a restaurant, okay? The people who are, this is a real restaurant and it's during business hours. And there are real clients and patrons all over the place. They're going to come and go. You, may, you might need to reshoot a scene over and over again. But if you do, and the people in the background keep changing, that's not going to look very realistic. You need people who are going to be there for the entire time. Maybe sometime they get up and they go, yes. But they need to have consistency. They need to have continuity. Not people jumping up all over the place, disappearing and appearing. And these are people who are going to be in the film. One of the things that you'll be required to do when you are in a film, especially major films, maybe not so much in smaller films, you need to sign a release. That's a form that says that it's all right for the production company to use your picture, maybe your voice, however they want, whenever they want. 
and they don't have to continue to pay you. Well, that may or may not be in the contract. It depends. Again, it depends on the type of production, the size and the scale of the production, who the production company is. Usually in smaller films, you won't be paid residuals over and over again as it's aired here there. You'll be paid, if you're paid, we'll talk about that in a moment, you'll be paid one time, and that's it. But they need to get in black and white with your signature on it, a form that says, yes, I agree that you can use my face, my image, my actions, maybe my voice, any way that you want for as long as you want. Now, there are really basically two kinds of extras. There are extras and there are featured extras. A regular extra is someone who blends into the background. You don't really pay that much attention to them. And of course, for this reason, and again, we're going to talk about being an extra later in another another episode in more detail. But you as an extra need to blend into the background. They don't want extras who are going to stand out. Wow, in this crowd, here's the guy who's whatever. No, they don't want that. They just want people who are walking, doing what they normally do in the background so that it looks natural and realistic. Now, a featured extra is a little bit different. A featured extra is a person, a non-speaking role, a person who is on screen long enough so that you would recognize them later. Like, for example, we go back to the restaurant scene. There's a server who comes and brings you meals and puts them on the table. Now, that person is on screen long enough so that if you see them later on, you probably would recognize them. You might not know exactly who they are, but you'd probably recognize them. That's a featured extra. Now, where are you going to get these kinds of roles, these, these jobs as extras? This brings us back to, again, where you're going to find work. I would say the first place to look for work is student films. Check, again, check on Facebook, check in the phone book if you still have one of those for colleges, community colleges, that have film programs in them. When there are film programs, there are film students, and film students need to make films. They're known as student films. That's one of your first sources for acting. Now, a caveat here. One, you probably, this is not always the case, but you probably will not get paid for what you're doing. You, you might get a credit in the film. You get food when you're on the set. You get the experience of being on a set. You also might, depending again on the circumstances, you might be able to get a clip from that film that shows you so that you can eventually put it in your demo reel. Now, you really don't want a lot of extra work in your demo reel, but at least this is a place to start. Another source for work as an extra is independent films. Once you're in these Facebook groups, you'll learn about different independent filmmakers in your area. They'll put casting notices, and often they'll say that they're looking for extras. That's a good source. And when it comes to independent films, sometimes you'll get paid, sometimes you won't get paid. Even with major, major films, uh, you might get paid, you might not get paid as an extra. That's okay. You'll always get paid in experience. And that's very important. The more experience you have on set in front of a camera, the better off you are when you're finally going to get some quality work. A moment ago, I mentioned the union, SAG. Should I be worried about that? Wow, that sounds pretty good. I want to be in the union. No, not necessarily, especially when you're beginning. You don't belong in the union. The union really is for working actors who want to get decent pay and decent working conditions. 
as an extra, you don't really need to. And it all depends, too, on where you're located. Because once you are a member of, of the union, there are certain requirements that filmmakers need to have before you can work for them. You might not be able to work in any student films because they don't pay, for one thing. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of the union at this point, but suffice it to say, if you join the union right away, you're going to need to work in union films. How many union films are shot near you? I've known actors who have regretted joining the union because they couldn't get any work. So for the moment, don't worry about it. Well, what is SAG? What is AFTRA? SAG is the Screen Actors Guild. AFTRA, AFTRA is the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. Now, these two unions were separate at one point, but they eventually combined, so now it's SAG-AFTRA. Now, that's a good resource. Go on YouTube, and in the search thing, put in SAG-AFTRA, and you'll see all kinds of videos by all kinds of actors, directors, producers, etc., about the craft of acting, how films are made, how to act. That's a great resource. Now, I want you to make me a promise right now. And that promise is that you won't run and find the nearest audition and go and audition right away. I love you. Because there are still things, especially about auditioning, that you really need to know. Nothing is worse than showing up for an audition or showing up for a shoot and not having any idea what you're doing. But I'll do anything! Because people will remember that. And you want people to have a positive impression of you. Remember, you can only make a first impression once. And we want your first impression to be a good one. Okay, that's all for now. As I mentioned, in the next video, we'll talk about auditioning. Again, a reminder, if you have any questions, comments, views, ideas, and opinions, feel free to put them in the comment section below or send them personally to me at actingforfilmandtv at gmail.com. And while you're at it, please be sure to subscribe to Lee WTV, put on the notification bell so that you'll get a notice about any of our future videos, be sure to like this and share it with your friends on Facebook, Instagram, any other kind of media. We'd like to reach as many people as we possibly can. Okay, bye for now. We'll see you on the set next time. Now, get out of here.